In this video, I'd like to talk about Teams live events. In a modern workplace, a Teams live event is the perfect way to connect with people in a format that's a one-to-many. A regular Teams meeting allows two-way communication between two or more people. The thing is, a Teams live event offers a solution for a much larger audience. Currently, it's up to 10,000 attendees. Many people will structure and deliver large, broadcast-style events to reach people like employees, customers, business partners, and is perfect for town hall-style presentations from anywhere in the world at any time, regardless of where your presenters or your audience are located. With these events, you can stream live video, other digital content, and share your screen to audiences that are both internal or public. Let's explore the creation of a Teams live event. Currently, you can only schedule these events within the Microsoft Teams desktop application. You can't do it on the web or on your mobile device. On the top right, we see a button for New Meeting. I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow and select Live Event. The event organizer is responsible for scheduling the live event. They ensure that the event is set up properly, with desired permissions, for any of the attendees, and who's going to be managing and running the event. The organizer is also going to select the production method, configure options, invite the attendees, select event group members, as well as manage generated reports after the event is over. This is the first part of setting up my event. I'll add a title, a location, which is optional. I'm going to have a conference room called Redwood. Then I'll pick a date and a time. And then within the details section of this, I can optionally provide info about the live event. Over here on the top right, I can invite presenters. As an organizer, you can see that I'm automatically a producer. Producers are the ones who host the event, making sure that the viewing experience is great and they control the live event stream. They can also share video or an active desktop or window. You'll likely notice that we didn't invite any attendees. And the reason is once we schedule this live event, we're going to either publish it in Teams, for example, send it in a calendar invite, or even email it. We'll click Next. This is where we set up our live event permissions. The choices include people and groups, and this means that only the people or groups that you specify can watch the event. Next is org wide. With this permission, anyone in your organization can watch the live event. They do, however, need to sign in using their work credentials. Then we have public. With this type of event, anyone with the link can attend it. They could be outside your organization and no sign-ins required. Here we'll choose the production method for the live event. There are two choices, Teams, which you already have, and most people are going to use it. The other choice is an external app or device. And typically this is done for a very professionally done and polished event. Also, if any of these choices are grayed out, it's likely you'll have to make a request to an IT administrator. I'm going to focus on using Teams to produce the event. We can see choices like the recording is available to producers and presenters, the recording is available to attendees. There's an option to have captions where you can choose the spoken language, but you can also translate to up to six languages. One that I really like is this attendee engagement report. If this is checked after the event, you can download some great information. Automatically, the Q&A box is not checked. Check the box if you want attendees to be able to ask questions during the event. This is a great tool for participation, since the attendees are always muted during these events. Once the choices are made, we can choose Schedule. Once created, we can then get an attendee link. And then share however you choose. From this screen, we could join the event, chat, or click Edit to make any changes. And we can see here that the live event resources won't be available until after the event. Now we can see it on our calendar. We also see this little symbol, which indicates that this is a live event and not a Teams meeting. If you need to make any changes, just click on the event and choose Edit. Like I said before, a Teams live event is the perfect way to connect in a one-to-many format and seamlessly coordinate engaging online events and town hall style presentations from anywhere in the world at any time. And that is an introduction to Teams live events and how to schedule one.